What's up, guys? This is Bobby Douglas, and we are back with the second half of the Duke Syracuse game. We were taking a look at Duke big man Vernon Carey Jr. He had a very productive first half, as you can see on the screen 12 points, 8 rebounds. And he continues that production in the second half, so I'm excited to get into it, and let's go. So, again, Carey's going to be number one in the navy bluish uniforms. And again, He's being guarded by Sidibe in that 2-3 zone. It's not really, he's not really being guarded by Sidibe, but that's who he's frequently being matched up against. And on the other end, he is guarding Sidibe. Right there, pretty decent contest. Just missed the block right there, but Dolzai finished it, and we're going to get an ad here. Hopefully we can... No, we can't. That's three out of four ads where we couldn't skip. One thing I hate about the ACT Digital Network is that we always get ads. However, they pretty much post every single game from conference play on YouTube, so that's another thing. So I'm kind of inclined to just live with the ads. So that's something we just have to deal with. But again, for the content I'm getting, it's very, very, I think, worth it. So again, Carey's in the post right now. Looks like he has a decent shot at that offensive rebound if Stanley didn't hit that three. Stanley had a pretty good second half in this game as well, if I remember correctly. He had a big and one layup late in the game. But Carey's in a decent spot there. Looks like it's going to be good board from Stanley right there. And let's see how they run. Sean Carey's going to get back on the block. And again, look, he's getting decent position, I think. And he's just kind of bobbing and weaving around Sidibe. Let's see. If he, again, another offensive rebound, another putback. That's his fourth offensive rebound, I think, in this game. Um, And yeah, that's just a really, you know, he's going to get a bunch of those in the NBA, I do think. And again, another putback, too. Again, he's, he has nice touch around the basket. I do think that's something that is maybe a little bit undersold in his game. But he does have nice touch. It's just going to be tough for him to match up defensively and be viable on that end, in my opinion. But again, offensively, if he can start knocking down the three ball with a little bit more consistency. Again, he was a 38% three-point shooter on 21 attempts. So he made eight out of 21 in the season. So he didn't. he obviously didn't shoot a whole lot of them. And look, they got the alley-oop right there. Really good finish from Carey, and he's just really going off in this half to start. That's a really, really good finish from him. Again, he saw that right away. He was calling for it. I think Stanley gave him the lob. You got Tech here, I think, on Carey. So that's just a little bit too excited, but... So yeah, and that's his third foul, so maybe he needs to be a little bit more smart. But again, I think that's kind of a soft technical foul, so I don't really blame him for that. Another rebound for him. That's a nice little pass from Carey. That's a really good pass, actually. That was awesome. That was a one-handed lefty full-court dime. And again, he almost killed Cassius Stanley in the process of it, but... Stanley with his hops, he went up and got it, and then he finished it. It's a nice pass from Carey. I do like that he saw the floor like that right there. We're going to see it again here. Again, just read it. That's not even being set either. That's a really good catch and finish from Stanley as well. Good overall just basketball play for Duke. I'd say right there. That was very fun. Who's the better passer, LaMelo Ball or Vernon Carey Jr.? It's right there. He's just kind of waiting for... Uh, Mark to get by Hurt right there. Was just kind of stalking his prey. Nothing really came out of it, but. Oh, this is the Dejan Giroux. This is Dejan Giroux biting night. I forgot about that. He's a top 100 guy for me. I think I have him at 99. He's probably going to go back to school, but, you know, he did get ejected for biting, so odd character concerns on that end, to say the least. Again, we're seeing this backcourt of Jones and Goldwire just starting to wreak havoc 
on Syracuse. This backcourt defensively, I mentioned in the Trey Jones video a few times that they were so good. So right there, you just saw Vernon Carey. He got tangled up with his own feet in transition. He, he was turned around the wrong way and ultimately gave little to no resistance on Dolajai. And he got the easy lay-in right there. Again, just being more aware and being a little bit more quick on his feet, I think. And, you know, I'm not really sure if he can really be taught those two things or if he can improve on it. So that's just something that worries me about his NBA future. So, again, we're going to see this here. So, Carey's, again, turned around. He did a 360, and then he didn't really offer any resistance. And, again, he just got tangled up with his own feet, and it was just an easy layup. So, again, I do think teams are going to really pick on him in pick and roll and pick and pop situations in the NBA. I don't think that's going to be one of his strong suits. He's out right here, so I'll skip ahead to 49.09 is when he comes back in. So, just let me get there. Got an ad coming up. Hopefully I got to the marker first. Let's see. Oh, we gotta play this ad. Oh, we can skip it, yay. Yeah, we're good, okay. So then carries in the low post right now. Trying to bang down low, trying to get position. Another three. I think that was by Jack White. Who hit that? There's another three from him. I think that was Beheim. Right there, Carey. It looks like he got the foul call. Or no, he stepped out of bounds. It's a tough play for him. Again, Trey Jones probably led him a little bit too far on that one. And so I don't necessarily blame Carey for that. Again, Duke has 12 turnovers in this game, too. That's a lot. But I'm going to pause this for a little bit and try and see if I can get the quality back up. I think it might be an ACC network upload thing as well, so. So Carey's going to grab that rebound again. Nice job just getting position on Sidibe. Sidibe, he had no chance of getting that rebound because Carey's size is just too great. So you got foul. Oh, here we go. Now we're back to good quality. And again, there's Vernon Carey's 10th double-double. So I think he's at, what, 16 and 10 right now. So he can obviously play a little bit. Gonna set a screen right here and then slip it a little bit. So again, they're trying to feed him. Getting right there. Good job taking his time. And again, that's an and one for Carey. Did a good job getting that to his left hand. I don't really know how great of a finisher he is with his right hand, but in college you don't really need that. And again, he did a nice job there finishing with his left and just taking his time down low. Finishing over length and through contact. Knocked on that free throw. Carey's going to go out right here, so I'll skip ahead to 51-24. Or, excuse me, 54-57 uh, when he comes back in. So, I'll do that right now. So, I mean, Carey's looking for the ball again. He's trying to get low. Oh, they almost had him on the alley-oop again. That same play. Vernon Carey almost got that rebound. Probably got fouled. But he ultimately, you know, his tip led to an offensive rebound for Duke. So, again, just really active on the offensive glass, especially against a zone team like Syracuse. He's done really well in this game, just fighting for every single rebound he's seen. Ooh, Cassius Stanley, great play. This Duke team, I think, would have gone to a Final Four if they were allowed to play the tournament this year. They were talented, athletic. Right there, Trey Jones just not being smart. Got another ad, damn it. 
Let's get this one again though. So again, he's flashing in the post right now, just kind of moving with the ball, trying to find the gaps in the 2-3. I want to see him post up right here. Yep, here we go. Let's see what he does. That time, again, another and one, another really strong finish through contact. And again, finish, nice finish with his left hand. Good drop step and good footwork overall. He's going to get another shot for an and one. We're going to see it again right here. And just using his big frame. And again, Mark Dolajai has no chance. That's just going through... That's just like going through water for Vernon Carey. Another good free throw. He has nice touch. A lot of his shots, a lot of his free throws are being, are swished in, you know? So you got free throws here. Yeah. Final 10 minutes of the second half. And again, Carey's done, he's had a very efficient, productive game. And so, there, again, there are things to like about him. I just think in today's NBA, the value for which you can get a guy like Vernon Carey, it's not a lot. So why, uh, I don't want to say waste a first-round pick, but why use a first-round pick on somebody who I think is worthy of a mid-to-late mid to second-round pick? You know, and he'll go a lot higher than that, obviously. But, you know, I, in my opinion, I'm not a huge fan of taking traditional big guys early in the first round or even in the first round unless they're truly, you know, transcendent. But I'm, I'm just not a huge fan of that. So that's why I have Vernon, guys like Vernon Carey, Isaiah Stewart lower in the second round. I like Carey better than Stewart as a prospect just because I think Carey's a little bit more efficient around the rim. Isaiah Stewart offers a little bit more defensively and as a rim protector, I would say. But, you know, those guys in my book are very comparable for what they serve, for what roles they serve in this draft class. I'll skip this free throw here. So again, this is the zone. It's a nice pass from O'Connell. Again, they're trying. They're, again, the thing with Kerry right now. So he's been dominating this entire game, right? So what you're noticing is that Syracuse is kind of starting to collapse around Kerry. And you know, while he's not getting a lot of points or shot opportunities in this case, he's really just creating a lot more space and a lot more opportunities for his own team. So I do think that's something that he does that does serve value for Vernon Kerry, at least at the college level. Not sure how valuable that'll be at the NBA, but I do think it's something that he deserves uh, noticing during his time at Duke. So he's carried down low again, and that time skip pass out to Gerard. Right there, did a decent job contesting that. Again, kind of did a gator arm chomp. And right there, that's just tough for, yeah, that, you can't expect him to come out all the way out there like that. On Joe Girard, and Joe Girard just buried a deep three. He's one of those guys who can hit from anywhere, so that's tough for Kerry. I think he's going to be out right here. So I will skip ahead about a minute and a half is when he comes back in. So, So here we go. So again, he was out for about 20 seconds. And later in this game, you'll see what I mean in terms of defense. They don't put him in on that end just because he can be seen as a switch, as a switching liability. They prefer to go to Laurier in those situations. So you'll see that a lot in the second half. Basically, the last few minutes of the game, they go offense defense with Carey and Delorier. So that's just something to keep in mind as well as we get towards the end of this game.
It's going to carry's going to hit the screen. Nice roll. Again, he's rolling into just an abyss. Or no, the opposite of abyss. He's just rolling into a giant wall with this zone. The pick and roll is going to be pretty much neutralized for him. But he's done a good job carving out space in the post, I will say. So that's something to like about it. And again, he had a very nice game in, in uh, this one. 26 and 17, which is just... Those are monster, monster stats. Shot pretty well from the field. Didn't really turn it over a whole lot. Had that really nice pass we saw earlier in this half. To Cassius Stanley as well. So again, ooh, right there, I would have liked to see Hurt maybe look at Carey a little bit. Oh, look at it. Mm. No, I guess Trey Jones is pretty far up ahead. But So again, they're getting pretty aggressive right here. Let's see if Vernon Carey finishes. Right there. Again, that's just a lack of vertical threat. And looks like we got a foul here. But again, obviously, if you get that ball in the dunker spot and he has a pretty wide open lane to the rim, you'd like to, you'd like to see him finish that with a dunk. But again, not super vertical athletically, so... It's a little bit of what happened right there. And we got two free throws for Carey right here. So we will see if he makes them. He will make them, actually. I know that for a fact. But Again, another perfect switch. You know, so I do think he has nice touch. His form looks pretty solid. So again, he finished, he started off 59%, or he's 59% as of this game, but he finished around 67%. So he definitely improved as the season went on, because this is an, or this game took place in early February. So, you know, he showed a better, um, better signs of being a decent free throw shooter as the season drew closer to a conclusion. So again, right now he was a step late on the switch. Luckily, that was a pretty good contest. He went straight up. And he ultimately got the rebound right there. I think he got it without even coming to the ground. So that was a pretty nice play. Oh, that's it. Ooh, backcourt. Ten seconds. Ooh, wow. I thought that could have been backcourt, too. That's a good job by Matthew Hurt staying in front of Dolge. I like that. Let's see if he gets that rebound. Another big, strong rebound from Carey. He actually got out. He got boxed out on the first uh, shot. He didn't let that happen again, though. And he grabbed that one pretty well. Looks like we got a blocking foul. And it's going to be free throws for Hurt, so I'll skip these. Oh, do we have a charge? We do have a charge. We got a turnover on Gerard, it looks like, so it's going to be Duke Ball. So again, Syracuse is pretty much unleashing the dogs right now. That should have been a foul. Vernon Carey, a nice put back. He got pushed in the back. That should have been a foul on Syracuse right there. But again, he got another offensive rebound. He had a pretty decent shot of the put back. Probably should have, could have finished that one. But but again, he's had a monster game so far. 24 and 16 at this moment in time. God, Syracuse is shooting horribly from the three-point line in this game. Again, he's in the dunker spot right now, and they're trying to get Dolajai to... Looks like they're trying to get Dolajai to step out to the free throw line to guard that Jack White flash, and then that looks like that would leave open a very and carry alley-oop, but time has passed. Let's see what he does here. That time, probably, probably could have finished that one as well. Might have gotten hit, but still, that's a very finishable hook for him. 
right there, that's a solid block from Kerry. Again, he that time, I'm not sure if he did it on purpose necessarily, but that time, Elijah Hughes just easily got by him on the drive, and then Kerry just managed to go up and get that shot blocked. So it was, an, it was a good recovery from Kerry, but I'm not really sure that was his initial his initial uh, plan right there. But nevertheless, he got the block, saved the basket. You got a foul on Elijah Hughes. So we got free throws here, I believe. So, Oh, wait, no. Did they call an offensive foul there? They did. Damn, I don't know about that one. No, oh, yeah, never mind. Okay. So right now you see Vernon carry on. That's how he did a nice job contesting. It was more of a Buddy Bayheim just total... Just wasn't balanced, but Vernon Carey again. You can see him kind of a little bit um, shell shocked by that switch, but he did a nice job recovering, at least getting a hand up there because we haven't seen him do that a whole lot. So Gary's already for all out, and I think we have a. I think Carey's out right here, so I'll skip this. Part and I'll get back to 130, 113.36 is when he comes back in here. So then Syracuse is just going to this full court press. It's going to be a two on one right there. That's not a good pass for Trade Road, from Trade Road. That's not Vernon Carey's fault. Worst spot to inbound it. Yeah, they're going to give it to Carey. Oh, Carey. That's a really... Oh, that's. Oh. I don't like saying that's a dumb play, but that's a really dumb play. That's a Scoop Jardine 2011 tournament type of play. You're allowed to go in the backcourt right there. So again, he's trying to walk the tightrope here, but he can go in the backcourt. There's no need to jump right there. And then he does. Then he gets a foul call against him, and that's his fourth. He's going to put Joe Girard on the line. That's not a good play from Carey at all. That's just a tough... That's tough. Yeah, I don't really like that at all. Again, you're allowed to move and go into backcourt. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of it. That, jeez. What? Wow. That was just when worlds collide right there. That was intense. So they're running a ball screen right there. That time, Carey did a nice job staying in front of Gerard until Trey Jones got back. Similar situation right there on that screen and roll. Right there, jumped way too early, led to an easy lay and yeah. Again, right there, just bit on the pump fake way too early. And again, he doesn't really have the foot speed or the agility to really recover after that. So again, you saw the, it just basically led to a layup from Elijah Hughes. That's a really good play from Castle Stanley as he got that in one late. And right now, Carey's out for a few minutes, so I'll skip ahead to 120.05. And this is where, I mentioned this earlier, this is where the offense-defense starts. So right there, maybe could have shuffled over a little bit more. Or yeah, a little bit more time before the offense-defense starts, but right there, nice. Just simple basketball right there, finishes with the dunk. And that's his 26th point, so he's done scoring for this, the rest of this game, but two minutes left. Got a timeout for Syracuse here. So Kerry's going to get the ball here. Good job just getting out. Ooh, that could have been a block. Ooh, big time call. But, so yeah, that was a block on Gerard.
And again, so you will see carries going out for Delorier, and that's so. So again, they're playing offense defense for the last minute forty five of this game. So I'll skip the defensive possession, obviously, and go back to when Kerry goes in. But just notice that. So they don't really feel comfortable with him defending in late situations. And again, he also has four fouls. But the thing is, though, like, so does Delorier, and he just fouled out, obviously. So that also could be another reason. But again, to me, the the way I'm reading into this is that he they just don't really trust him defending in this type of situation late in the game. So now Delore is filed out. Wendell Moore is filed out. And then they're just passing the ball around the perimeter. Looks like they're going to get a foul here. And Carey is going to... Looks like he's going to go out, actually. I'm not quite sure. He might be in for a few seconds here, and then he goes back out. No, nope, never mind. He's out. So I'll skip ahead to 128.16 is when he comes back in. So and here's Gary again. Getting the ball, and looks like they tried to foul him. Probably could have called it there as well. But again, final minute of play here. Got a timeout for Duke. Got some buffering here. There we go. We're good. More buffering here. This is not good. Try to skip this ahead. What do you have to do here? There we go. Jesus, what is going on? Here we go. Okay, we're good. Just so gonna just kind of riding him and probably could have gotten a Vernon Carey dunk right there if Hurt saw him. Got another foul here and then uh uh, Kerry's going to go back out, and then he's in for one last time. And he's in for the last 38.2 seconds here. So again, and he's in right now just because it's basically attrition. I'm pretty sure three Duke guys have fouled out. Probably could have gotten a foul there, but a good job just staying strong. with It didn't look comfortable, but he got it out of his hands. Fast enough. Foul here. I'll skip these free throws. Again, they have Trey Jones listed as number 23 overall prospect in the draft. Again, I have him closer to like 33. So then Vernon Carey in drop coverage. Good job getting that rebound. I would like to see him catch it a little bit higher than that. Looked like he let it fall to him. But that's going to basically be the entire game. So I'll end the video here. And yeah, that'll do it for me. And we'll see you tomorrow with another breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of Vernon Carey Jr. Um, listen, I'm not super high on him as a prospect, but I do think he has his strengths. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you tomorrow for another breakdown. Thanks.